Hello, I'm Calvin Olson, and I will be reading five poems from Portuguese poet João Luís Barreto Guimarães' 11th collection, titled Movement, which was published in Portugal in 2020, and very recently won the DST Grand Prize in Literature. I'm going to start with uh, the first poem called Tomatoes Fallen on the Roadside. If you drive south after having crossed the river, it's normal to see, right as the lowlands begin, tomatoes on the side of the road. Shredded tomatoes, scattered red over the ground, shaken loose from open boxes on the tractors traversing the tight curves, the tilt. They resemble puddles of blood, smudges of a murder, evidence of some skirmish, someone fleeing the north for the liberating south. But really, they're just tomatoes. Even you are going to want to squash under a scorching sun that keeps burning overhead as somebody keeps feeding him firewood. Second poem is called Still Life with a Wounded Umbrella. The old black umbrella couldn't quite resist the wind's excoriation, that wind with all its insistence. Now the umbrella lies broken on a corner of the present that continues flowing in the direction of the present, like a piece left over from a disassembled toy that didn't stop working even without that piece in place. The sun wields absence as punishment now the hand is an umbrella, shielding a thought. In battle, those who lose do not speak through history books, but through the things they leave behind. And today the clouds have won, without haste and without surrender. Like the swarm of seagulls, itself a cloud of sound, following a fishing boat, pollinating this morning. Next title is in French, so I apologize if I massacre it. Uh, it is called Arabesque Penché. The eyes of the ballerina notice themselves in the mirror, the hand poised in the air, learning alongside the actual hand. If an error occurs, a mirror is not one to keep quiet. Experience is archived on the points of her shoes, like a game trail that was once all flora, tattering into a path. The place the ballerina hunts is the present. She dances over pain itself, sculpting in her own image, emancipating anatomy, leg even higher in the air, demanding from Degas the glory for this drawing. Poem number four is called The Nights Between Two Sundays. For a time, the catalog my grandmother brought home from the tobacconist offered silverware for collecting. Every day, a piece of metal, knives, forks, spoons was added to the service, neither requested nor used, that in a few years would turn into a useful investment. Now she is alone in a fully equipped kitchen in front of a naked table where on afternoons she thumbs through the newest crisis. The nights cost more. I imagine her clipping out pictures of recipes that her magazine serves up in fascicles every Sunday. And she sets the table for two, one for her and one for solitude. She's kept it that way since the day she first went it alone like a worm setting up shop inside a beautiful apple. And the last poem is called Cafe Exile. There is an empty chair that passes from table to table to those in need of it, a tired chair. Last Tuesday was the fifth time from a party of four. It was nabbed as a high chair for a table for two. Now it returns to its place whisked through the room by a worker indifferent to the brio that it brought. 
I wonder if it still exists once it leaves my line of sight, ransomed to the refrain of its danse macabre. Now and then, a fleeting breeze waltzes through the door like a flash of hope, revolving on a lighthouse beacon. And then, it's night once again. Thank you.